Tonight on the show, it's Ask an Auto Writer. Get your questions ready today on the Lemonade Car Show. I'm Lorraine Sommerfeld and this is the Lemonade Car Show. Today is Ask an Auto Writer. Get your questions ready and also our resident mechanic will answer any of your car related questions in our Ask a Mechanic segment. Lemonade is brought to you by OMVIC. That's Ontario's vehicle sales regulator and we're produced by the Automobile Protection Association. The APA fights for you, the consumer, and provides information and news on all parts of the industry. Visit our website at apa.ca or reach us by phone at 416-204-1444. Joining me today is Jill McIntosh. She's a writer at the National Post and Ellie Melnick. He's the owner of Start Auto. We'll be taking your calls this evening at our new number 888-764-3778. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Ellie, Thanks nice to have you back. Rain. Pleasure as always. Jill, first time. First time. Oh. It's about time. <laughs> Thank you. You and I go way back. You, of course, are, you know, more senior than I am at the National Post. The, 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 the word is mature, dear. <laughs> mature. <Okay>. Mature. <laughs> yes. So, but I'm glad you're here because you have a really cool perspective on this industry, which I really hate to say this, but I admire it a great deal. <laughs> and I was so glad when you came on board at driving.ca because I think you make the section better. Um, you not only do a lot of car reviews, you also have a really great history in cars. You own a lot of old stuff yourself. Well, maybe it was new when you bought it. I don't it, know. Well, the horse, the horse <laughs> was, yes. But you also do a lot of neat how things work and how they work. And the, your current column is about airbags, and I think it's a really, really important topic for a couple of reasons. The recall, which we'll get into in a minute with Ellie. But can you talk a little bit about how airbags work, what consumers should be paying attention to, and maybe some of the misconceptions or myths around the role that airbags play? Well, absolutely. And, and you've written about this extensively as well. So. No, please come in with anything. As I said to you earlier, a couple of windbags talking about airbags. <laughs> but okay. yeah, it, it amazes me that we had this, this, these things in our, our dashes and, and inside our steering wheels, and people don't really understand how they work. And the problem is that if you don't, they can be very dangerous. As you know, these, these come out at you know, 200, 300 kilometers an hour, and they're rock hard. One of the things we have is that people, they see them in slow motion or we see them in movies, they're played for comic they're effect. Like marshmallows. People think yeah, they think they're, <laughs> they think they're pillows, they think they're, they're these really soft things, and they're not. They come out very fast, very hard. They can save your life, but if you're not smart about them, they can kill you, as you know. Yeah, I wrote about a girl who had her feet up on the dash, and it oh. just about destroyed. She's alive, but she's got mental problems now and her feet were destroyed and her legs because her knees got driven back into her head and oh, she had a brain yes. bleed and it was feet up on the dash and a lot of people drive like this they put their feet up on the dash in the summer I used to do it when I was young and bendier but it, it's really dangerous to be doing it but the other thing is oh, seating yes. position matters tell please tell people seating position matters as you say not with your feet up on the dash but seating position is important because when you are in the in the correct position the airbag can help you. So you have to sit up straight, you have to sit with your feet on the floor, you have to have a seat belt on. Don't be leaning against the glass, don't be leaning forward, be 10 inches, 12 inches, I don't know what that is in when your, when your arms are, yeah. yeah. Holding the steering wheel at nine and three with your, um, with your thumbs out. One thing I can't, I, this drives me absolutely crazy, <laughs> not just that, but this. This hooking, hooking thing, where did that start? You, you see people, and if you do it, I'll smack you. I don't do it. Well, then good. I'm that's not going to admit if I do anything bad around well, you. Well, that's, that's true, because I'll smack you. But I, I see, and women are bad for this, but I see men do it also, where they're, they're making a turn, and their hand is like this, and they're turning the wheel like that. What will happen in that case, first of all, you have no control over the car. So you're, you're making a turn where you, you've only got about this much space rather than this. But the other thing is that if that airbag goes off, if, if someone comes in to hit you and that airbag goes off, it's going to smash everything forward, it's going to break your wrist, and then it's going to smash everything into your face. And that's not pleasant. 
That's, that's not good. That's not good. I'm going to move this over to Ellie for a second because airbags yep. keep coming up. The recalls are still outstanding. They're they added, they added more a couple of weeks ago. So a couple of observations. First of all, today's airbags are much smarter than they used to be. And most cars have what's called a weight sensor. It is a weight sensor that weighs the weight of the passenger mm -hmm. and decides how much force to apply or to deploy the bag with. The bag, so if, if it's a ki kid or, or lighter person, the, the lower power squib is fired. If it's a heavy person, then the full, uh, uh, the full load is there to support the mass of the person flying forward. The other observation that we see, and we see a lot of people, particularly shorter people, they drive with their chest almost on the steering wheel. And when I see that, I cringe. Because if the airbag goes off, you, you can literally die. So how do we tell people I, I that tell people this far, at least this far away from the wheel. Mm -hmm. And they go, well, I don't reach the pedals. Yes, you do. If you, just, if you straighten out your leg and get used to it, you're perfectly fine. And the other thing is, when, you're go, when you go to buy a car, don't buy a car if you can't position yourself safely and comfortably in that car. I don't care how much you love it or how much a deal you're getting on it. If you can't put your foot flat behind the pedals, which means you can depress them both fully, if you can't be without the wheel right here, exactly. the car is not fit for and you. And a lot of people don't realize that, a lot, that most wheels today are telescopic. So they don't all just go up and down, but they also go in and out. And what you can do in that case is move the seat close enough that you're at the pedals and then move the wheel in to get right. that space as well. And, and some people don't realize that their cars do this. And sometimes it's hard to find the, little, the, the little tab. The some of, some of yeah. them are way down the bottom. You have to search for it, but it, it is there. And we've got some salespeople that are really good at acclimating you to your new car with the walk around. And some people just go, I want the keys, I want the keys, I want the keys. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. For some, for really particularly short people, you can get cars with moving pedals. You can adjust the position of, mm -hmm. the, of the pedals. So that's a solution. And I uh, think a lot of these solutions used to be just on higher end cars, but like everything else, it's coming down into even entry level correct. stuff. So there are more options for everybody. Right. It's not so just about having deep pockets. It's about looking around and not stopping until you find the one that fits you best. So it is critical. It yeah. really is with the airbags. And one more thing to remember, pets. That's oh. another thing. When you see pe I drive along and I see people and they have the dog oh, in their lap. And what will happen in that case, usually it's the passenger, sometimes it's the driver. In the driver's case, it's, it's dangerous because you don't have full control. But then if the airbag goes off and, and you know, fender benders, they happen, that will, first of all, kill the dog. Yep. And then it will push the dog into your abdomen and could cause internal injuries. Uh, you love your dog? put them in the back seat, make sure that they're harnessed in. We did a whole show on this last year because we had a vet on and some of the stories that she had were heartbreaking. Oh yes. Because the other mm -hmm. problem is if you're, pe I tested a bunch of harnesses because there's only two that are recommended by an independent institute down in the States. But the other problem is if you're in a collision, the dog takes off, the dog's mm -hmm. terrified yes. and can take off and even if it's injured. The other thing is rescue people, first responders, their job is you. If that dog is territorial or upset, hurt, angry, whatever, they're going to do whatever they have to do to get to you. They're not going to necessarily call in SPCA or a dog handler mm. or something to get to you. They are going to do what they have to do to save the person, not the dog. So you're not doing, you know, Buffy any favors by not anchoring her in a cage if she's little or in a mm. harness if they're big. Exactly. And it's like kids, they get used to it. Oh, I know. And you, you see drivers with the dogs in their laps and you, you just, you do not have, you're not in full control of the car. You're, you're actually impaired. And we, yeah. we tend to think of impaired as just being drunk. But impaired driving means that you are... You, and distract. You're yeah. distracted and, and yeah. you're, not, you're not giving it your full attention. Yeah, we drove to the cottage with a cat in a cage once. My dad was driving, and we're like, we're just going to let him out for it. We're just going to say hi to him. We opened the cage, the thing bolted underneath the pedals on the 400. Mm -hmm. And of course, my father freaked, trying to get this car over to the side of the road. And we're like, we're so sorry. We're in so much trouble. Mm -hmm. But again, the cat should stay in a cage, not, yes. you know, be out loose and running around. Um, we didn't get into the airbag 
replacement stuff, but I do want to talk about it some more because I'm still getting calls and letters about it. People are getting concerned in Canada because the recall notices are outstanding. There's nothing to replace them with yet because they're all being made by the same, well, they were being made by Takata, Takata. but yeah. no one's up in line and we're not we're not in line to actually be getting these anytime soon, I don't think. So I do want to talk about the safety aspect of sure. that when we come back because, again, it's still outstanding. Um, but our weather is predicating a lot of that, right? Exactly. You're going to say I use that yeah. word wrong, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to do a, a 10 count here because I wound that up too soon. <laughs> The Lemonade Car Show, brought to you by OMVIC, Ontario's motor vehicle sales regulator, returns after this short break. When we come back, we'll be taking your calls. Please note our new number, 888-764-3778.